All right, welcome back to our video lecture series on chapter 2.6 in the Lock 5 textbook. All right, this was the last slide we looked at, interpretation of a regression line. All right, so let's look at exercise versus GPA. So this data came from a survey gave at a future stats class, actually multiple stats classes I taught a couple years ago. But on the hours of exercise per week and grade point average of students, positively correlated, excuse me, positively associated, negatively associated, not associated, or some other type of association. All right, so let's plot the line of best fit. Here we got GPA 3.26 minus 0 0.0114 times exercise. So we have a line of best fit. In fact, any technology will do this. But this looks kind of chaotic. There's, I don't see a very strong trend going up or going down. Almost like a little shotgun blast, kind of. I would say that this is not associated, or very, very little association with, uh, we're seeing between GPA and how much someone exercises. And that leads to the second regression uh, caution or warning. Computers or stack key, whatever software you use, will always calculate regression for uh, two quantitative variables, even if they are not associated or if the association is not linear. The idea is always plot your data, I should say always visualize your data. Plot, visualize your data, because you could get a line of best fit, and we'll just calculate down here, but it might not really make any sense or be be, be able to use any type of prediction when you have an association between two variables. And the idea is the regression line equation should only be used if the association is approximately linear. Another caution, outliers, especially outliers in both variables can be very influential on the regression line. Always plot your data. And we're going to look at this idea of outliers in class activity. All right, the higher values of X may lead to higher or lower predicted values of Y, but we cannot say that this means there is a causation, that changing Y will cause Y to increase or decrease. Again, this is a prediction, but going back to chapter 2.5, correlation even if you have a strong linear correlation, does absolutely not imply causation. Okay, don't forget that causation can only be determined if the values of the explanatory variable were determined randomly. And this is really the case for continuous explanatory variables. So if we just have observational data, we can make predictions, and we could use lines of best fit and study correlation, but we cannot directly lead to causation purely with one purely observational data. We need to have an experiment with the, um, the variable being randomly um, randomized, excuse me, the, the response variable being, being randomized. Otherwise, we cannot imply causation. So suppose you have a correlation between X and Y is approximately zero, so close to zero. What will the regression line look like if you have little to no correlation between two variables. If that's the case, the regression line will be flat, approximately flat. I like to think about this as if the correlation is approximately zero, then the slope of the regression line will be approximately zero. We're going to have a slope of about zero. Go back to that last example we already looked at with the GPA versus exercise. And sometimes looking at a graph isn't ideal because it looks like there's a pretty decent negative slope on this line. The reason why the slope looks like it's fairly negative is because it is negative, but look at the scaling. The, the y-axis goes from 2 to 4.2, only a 2.2 change in GPA, whereas exercise goes all the way from 0 to 35 hours. So it's the scaling on the x and y axis are so off. If these were the same scaling, you know, 0 to 35 or uh, 2 to 4.2, this would be almost a flat line. 
That's why I like going go back to the last slide. I like thinking about if correlation is zero, the slope of the regression line will be approximately zero. And notice right here, the slope of this line is negative 0 0.0114. So not exactly zero, but it's very close to zero. So it's a way of getting at a like, uh, little to know linear correlation between two variables. Okay, as a summary, for quantitative response and quantitative predicted value x, the least squares line is y hat equals a plus bx. And don't forget, in this form, b is the slope and a is the intercept. And these are chosen, I should say, these are calculated with software using you know, calculus and linear algebra to minimize the sum of squared residuals. For our class, you're going to be uh, getting these values with technology. For each data case, for each data point we know, the residual is the observed minus the expected. We rely on technology to give the prediction equation, also known as the least squares fit or regression line. And the slope is interpreted as the change in predicted response when the explanatory variable increases by one. And keep in mind, there's nothing in here about causation, it's the predicted change. The, uh, summarizing those cautions, don't extrapolate far beyond where the model is built. So if you have a bunch of data, extrapolate is moving outside, very far outside the known data. Estimating a least squares line does not mean there is a linear trend in the data. Okay, okay. So software, computer calculators will always calculate a least squares line. If you're dealing with two quantitative variables, that does not mean there actually is a linear trend. Watch out for outliers that don't fit the pattern or can greatly influence the line. We'll look at this more in the next uh, activity, last activity. And even a strong linear fit does not imply causation. It just means there's a strong linear correlation. Don't forget, correlation is not causation. And for all these, always plot your data. It's not good just to look at a line or look at an equation. You want to actually look at your data, look at that scatter plot which you, I expect you to create with software, something like a stat key or something else, to plot your data before you make any predictions or do anything like that. All right, this concludes the video lesson on these particular slides, kind of the basics, the definitions, and the summary, and cautions of lines of best fit. I have a couple more very short videos going over how to use stat key, specifically how to use stat key, the software, to create lines of best fit, both prepackaged data, typing in your own data, or uploading files.